Hi, welcome to this next section in the Cubase Guru Synthesis course. As you can see, it's called Filters. Now, one thing I need to make plain before we start, filters are notoriously difficult to show you how they work. I will show you as best as I can certain filter types working, but there's a lot of information here, a lot of written information that you can use to your advantage. But one of the things you will need to do is experiment and use your ears and learn how filters work. Get to know the filters of the tool that you're using. And by that, by listening to filters, it will increase your listening ability. And obviously you'll learn a lot from that as well. So in this section, I will be trying my best to show you what I can, but a lot of it will be left up to you to experiment. So without further ado, let's get on with it. Okay, the first type of filter we're going to look at is a low pass filter. Now, we've just got some information about a low pass here. A low pass filter allows low frequencies to pass. This is what this diagram is showing. If you've got a sound, and this is the highest level of that sound, and you have a low pass filter activated on it, this section here in the white, if you imagine, let's say this is 20 hertz, and this is 20,000 kilohertz on the frequency range, these section here are the low frequencies. Even though it's low, mid, and high, these are the frequencies that the filter is allowing to pass through it untouched. This section here, the filter's cutting out. Now if I was to lower the low pass frequency by taking this section here and slowly moving it down, the white section would be getting smaller, so it would only eventually come all the way down here, it would only be allowing the extreme low frequencies through, and of course cutting all the high frequencies. So as you can see here, it cuts higher frequencies. When it's fully open, all frequencies pass through. Some filters will actually still cut when fully open. They will be cutting a certain amount of frequencies out. Now, again, this is the kind of thing that you'll learn once you learn the filters that you're using, whether it be in Zebra or Predator or an Axis Virus or a Moog or whatever it may be. You learn the filters. It's very important. And again, as I said, as the filter closes, it allows less sound to pass through. This results in the sound becoming duller as higher frequencies are filtered out. Pretty self-explanatory, but I can show you that, which is what we'll do now. Okay, here we have Zebra 2.5 set up with one oscillator and a voltage control filter. As you can see, everything's set to the initial patch and the cutoff on the filter is fully opened. The filter that I'm using is the Low Pass 12 dB filter. I'll explain in more detail later. And I've got the Blue Cat Freak Analyst Pro here, which will show you things working. Okay, so if I hold C down now, you'll see the full spectrum that's coming through from this saw There we go. Now what I'm going to do is slowly reduce the cutoff of this low pass filter and what you'll see is these higher frequencies up this side will slowly start to be filtered out. Listen to how it sounds as well. The sound, as the high frequencies are removed, the sound gets duller and duller. So let's have a go at that. until eventually almost all of it's cut out. So as you can see, the low pass lets the low frequencies through. So if I do it the other way, you'll see the low frequencies come in first, then we'll go up to the high frequency. Okay, that was easy. Let's move on to the next section. The next section is our high pass filter. And the sharp ones amongst you, yes, you would have guessed it. It's exactly the opposite of a low pass filter. It allows the high frequencies to pass, which is the white section, cuts the lower frequencies, when it's fully opened, all frequencies will pass through. As the filter closes, it allows less sound to pass through. This results in the sound becoming thinner as lower frequencies are filtered out. It's also used for filtering out low-end rumble, so to get rid of things like dullness or muddiness in the mix. And I can show you an example of that also very quickly, but we'll show you the filter working first. So this time we have a high-pass filter with a, a high-pass 12 decibel filter. We'll take the cut off right off. So as you can see, everything's passing through at the moment because the cut off's down. We'll ramp it up, and again, you'll see the, felt, uh, the frequencies being removed. As you can see in this case, even with the cut off fully open, it's still allowing frequencies through. And you can hear it's really thin and nasally. Now, 
Now, with regards to using that to remove muddiness, say you had a kick in a base, you would use that type of filtering to remove the low end to leave room and air. So let me just show you a quick example of that. Okay, what I've done is just set up a quick kick and a quick bass line. I've got two different sounds. What I've done, on each one, I've set up a high-pass filter. So as you can see, on each channel, we have a high-pass filter. Now, you may be saying, that's not a high-pass filter, that's EQ. EQ is simply a set of filters. That's really all it is, but we're not going to get into that at the moment. So, as you can see, I've got high-pass and a high-pass. Now, what we're going to do is use these to make this sound less boomy, hence tidying up the bottom end, making it less muddy. That's probably a term you hear all the time, so let's have a listen. So, we'll, we'll turn up the kick first. Okay, has a nice level for the kick. And then we'll turn up the bass. Okay, not too bad, but we can tidy it up. Now we'll tidy up the kick. Turn on the EQ. Cut the kick at C thirty hertz. Now we'll do the same with the bass. Now this is just me messing around, but as you can already hear, the bottom end is nowhere near as muddy as it was. It's cleaner, it does sound thinner, you're right, it doesn't sound as bassy and as boomy, but remember you would be doing this a lot more accurately than I'm doing at the moment, and remember if you've got things like pads that have got huge bottom ends in them, leads, acid sound, vocal effects, effects, anything, if you high pass everything, just do it properly, you'll make sure that the bottom end, the kick in the bass, will have the space that they deserve and need, which means your, your, your bass and your kick will come through much, much clearer. Anyway, let's move on. After all, this is about filtering, not about kicking bass. Okay, the next section I wanted to talk to you about is the bandpass filter. Now, this is easier to show you on this diagram than it is on anything else. I'll have a go at it on one of the other tools I've got, but it's e much easier to explain it here because it is so self-explanatory. Okay, the bandpass filter. This filter acts like a combination of a low pass and a high pass filter by cutting frequencies at both ends of the spectrum, only allowing a narrow band to pass, hence the name bandpass. So as you can see here, this is the band that the filter allows to pass. The white section is the only frequencies that will pass the filter. This section here and this section here have both been removed. So as it says here, the center frequency is determined by the frequency control, which allows the full signal to pass. Moving outwards from the center frequency, the sound spectrum is progressively cut. So as you can see, it's not a definite cut. It doesn't go straight line from there to there. It's progressively cut on the way out. Bandpass filters sound similar to low pass and high pass filters at the extremes of the frequency range. So basically what that's saying is if you had a high pass and a low pass filter, on the same channel, you would get this effect. Basically using the low pass to allow the low section of this through and a high pass to allow the high section of this through. Now let's see how well I can do showing you this in real time. Okay, so here we have the, again, the filter is set up with the bandpass filter. And on this spectrum analyzer here, you'll be able to see what frequencies are actually passing when I increase the cutoff. So take a look, you will see the band increase as I move the cutoff up. So as you can see here, that's the band. And on this, from around 63 hertz up to 12,500 kilohertz, that's the band that the band pass is allowing to pass. That's that section there. Pretty self-explanatory. Let's move on to the next one. Notch. Again, as you can see by the picture, 
It's the opposite of band pass, band reject. So what the filter itself does is reject or cuts out these frequencies instead of allowing them through. As it says here, frequencies in the shade area are cut. This filter can be used for effects. It can make some odd effects if it's modulated up and down. It can also be used surgically in the mix, generally with EQ. So I can show you some cutting using an EQ with a band reject type method. And I'll try again to show you on the tools that I've got there. Okay, the notch filter. Again, we've got it here. BR notch on the filter in Zebra. I don't know how well we'll be able to see it on this, but we'll give it a go. So here goes. Yeah. You could see it moving up there. There it is. I'll just magnify into that. There you go. You can see it's notching out those frequencies. Let's see if it will show you better on this spectrum analyzer. Yeah, you can see it a bit better on this one. But that's it. That's the notch. That's the frequencies being notched out by the notch or band reject filter, as it shows you there in that diagram. Okay, let's move on. Okay, you also have a peak filter. Again, it boosts the sound. The difference with this is the width can be changed so that it can be controlled by the cutoff and the resonance. Now, I guess the easiest way to show you this is by using an EQ with a bandwidth setting. So let's do that. Okay, this is just a, an EQ. Most EQs have this ability. In fact, the Cubase built-in EQ has it. It's this bottom one here. But I'll show you on the Cambridge, simply because it's different. So, to create a peak or a notch, we simply select the frequency, as you would with any normal EQ. So let's select 500 hertz. And then you can use the gain to reduce or boost or cut or boost but you can also use a thing called the Q or the bandwidth setting to make that selection wider so it covers more frequencies and that's simply what this is that's what this type of filter does it gives you this extra control and to see that working here we go Just make the 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 gain ridiculous so that you see it working. So this area around 500 hertz is being made bigger, or the gain's being boosted. And now when I change the the Q. Watch for the frequencies around 500 hertz spreading out and getting bigger. So that's it. That's your peak filter. Okay, we've got a couple of other filters here that we'll just go over quickly. We've got a formant filter. You can make vowel sounds with that. And you've got the comb filter. Now we'll have a look at the formant filter quickly. Here we have the formant filter again, it's a low pass formant. It's in here. So if we, we turn up the formant amount then we can change the vowel type, which is great. Listen to this. So it's skipping through A E I O U.
So that's it, that's basically your formant filter. Next we have the, the comb filter. Again, these filters work by adding a slightly delayed version of the signal to itself. This process creates a chorus or metallic type of sound due to the phase cancellations this causes. I'll show you the comb filter, but we get into that in a lot more depth later on. This is the comb filter in Zebra. No more about that because we'll get into it in depth later on. Comb filters are great. Okay, let's move on. Now we're going to get into some stuff about the filter parameters. In this case, the cutoff frequency. Very simple to understand, especially if you use the diagram. This is the point at which the filter begins to have an effect. So as you can see here, this is where the filter comes in. From there, you can see the filter cutting off the frequencies above that point. If you use a low pass filter, everything above the cutoff frequency will be reduced, like I showed you earlier. And if you use a high pass filter, everything below the cutoff frequency will be reduced. Okay, let me just show you the cutoff working. Okay, again, you've seen this before. Turn the, the, the I can show you the filter cutoff point more accurately here. Now, as you can see here, where the frequencies above this point here are being reduced, that's the filter cutoff point. That's where the filter cutoff is actually starting to work. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is the resonance. The resonance affects the frequencies around the filter cutoff. So, as it says here, resonance works by boosting the frequencies around the cutoff frequency. Use subtly, it can make a sound brighter or thinner. Use more aggressively, the effect is more extreme. And some filters with very high resonance settings self-oscillate. The filter then acts as a sine wave oscillator. Bandwidth, what we just explained earlier, this allows you to adjust the resonant peak. And the resonant peak, if we go back to the previous, is this section here. So the bandwidth allows you to move the resonant peak, resonance, resonant peak here. So this is the resonance this section here. That's the bandwidth, that's the resonance, that's the filter cutoff frequency. Very easy to understand. And drive. Not all filters have drives. Some of them do, some of them don't. It basically works by the input signal overloading the filter, which can give a warm or rich sound. So let me just show you those parameters. So again, back here we have the... our sound with the filter cutoff around about here. Now if I turn the resonance up, resonance up, watch what happens to those frequencies. Let me just zoom in a bit. There you go. So there's your filter. There's your cutoff point. Now that we've turned the resonance up, that was the resonant peak. Which, if you remember, is directly related to this. So that's what I've just showed you. I've just showed you that diagram actually working. Drive isn't on the normal filter in Zebra, but we can show you. I can show you what it's kind of like. It's the input signal overloading the filter. So I can show you here with this overload. But that's it. You've got to be really careful with stuff like that because it gets extremely loud. Okay, let's move on. Okay, the next section is some parameters of the filters. This one's filter slopes. Now, there's not going to be any more demonstrations for this because it's easier for me to explain it just with using the diagrams. And it's a very simple principle. Remember earlier when I was saying we were using a filter, it may have been a 12 decibel filter or a 6 decibel filter or whatever, which I can actually show you. So remember here, we're using the low pass 12 decibel filter. Okay, this is what this stuff's relating to. So what you basically have is a 6 decibel filter per octave, sometimes known as a one-pole filter. You'll see this on hardware mainly. But you see it, you see it written in software as well, it just depends. So a 6 decibel filter per octave 
means a reduction of 6 decibels at 1 octave above the cutoff point. It's that simple. So what that basically means, this is our full level of our sound. So if I... The full, that's the full amplitude, the full volume of the sound. Here is the cutoff point, where the cutoff starts to kick into the frequency and starts to kick frequencies out. So what that means is, if I play C3, and then I go up one octave to C4, there will be a reduction of 6 decibels at the cutoff point. That's it. It's that simple. That's the type of filter, and it's directly related to the sharpness of this. In fact, I can show you this a little bit in better detail, but let me just make sure that you get this, this principle nailed in your head. It's an easy one to remember, but it's quite important. 12 decibels per octave means exactly the same, but at double. So it's known as a two-pole filter, and it means it reduces by 12 decibels the overall volume at one octave above the cutoff point. 24 decibels per octave is a four-pole filter, which means a reduction of 24 decibels one octave above the cutoff point, and a 48 decibel per octave filter, which is known as an eight-pole filter, will have a reduction of 48 decibels at one octave above the cutoff point. Now I can show you what those different ones look like. Okay, again, I've got the, the Cambridge EQ out because it's got a whole host of different filter types. So if we go in here, if I use this at the moment, now you see the curve there. That curve from 27.1, in fact, it's easier. Okay, yeah, we're zoomed in. So that curve there is a 6 decibel per octave filter. If I change it to 12 decibel, watch what happens. As you can see, it's got steeper. If I change it to a 24, well, there's actually an 18 here. Steeper again, 24, steeper again, 30, 36, so on and so forth. So you can see what it does. The higher the number, the more steep the cut which actually is great when you're using things like low-pass filters and such. In fact, it's got one that's so good that it's not that one. It's the Butterworth 6. Look at the sharpness of that. That's superb for cutting frequencies below the point. Of course, it's the same with the high frequencies. You can do that with that as well. Excellent. So the sharp ones will give you a really immediate cut where the lower ones, it's a more gradual, nice kind of curve. Okay, okay, now we're getting into kind of controlling some parameters. And these are just basic kind of guidelines that you can use. Okay, cutoff. The main but not the only modulation controls for controlling the filter cutoff are envelope and velocity. You can also use LFOs and anything else that you can modulate over time. And not just time, over the frequency range everything. So again, the envelope's ideal for moving the filters cut on frequency over time, and velocity can be used to make a note brighter or duller, depending on how hard you hit the keyboard. Now I can show you that. Okay, here we have a normal, again, the normal oscillator, normal filter. The filter's got a velocity knob on it. So if I turn it down, what do you think will happen? still hitting the key at the same with the same force but now if I hit it at the same force it's got a reduced volume level now the next time I touch it, I'm going to touch it really softly and it should be very high and bright there you go so the velocity controls you can control how much the filter cutoff opens depending on how hard you hit the keys. Now if I turn it up this way, now if I hit it really soft, okay, it's full open. If I hit it really hard, it's reduced. So as you can see, you can control the filter cutoff using the velocity control. And the other one was 
controlling the uh, the filter cut off by using an envelope. So if we come in here, envelope number one. So, and you already know of this, of course, because I've I've taught all of this already in the first videos. But it's good to show you. Let's just lower the cut off so you can hear it working. So now we've told it we want the envelope to control the cut off. So you can hear we've got a nice long attack, so the the cut off opens up gradually. But that's it. Nice and easy. And you've got key tracking. Key tracking is used to open the filter more as you go up in frequency and close the filter as you go down the keyboard. So up and down the keyboard, you can use key tracking to open up the filter. Okay, so here again we've got the, the cutoff set. I'll just remove any modulation. So I've got it to halfway so it's kind of dull. Now we've got the key follow here. If I turn it right up, you'll hear the, as, as I go further up the keyboard, I'll go up by one octave, you'll hear the filter cutoff opening more and more the higher I go. So you can hear it opening the higher you go up. And that's it, really. Resonance. Now the resonance of the filter can be used in several different ways. It can be used to emphasise the filter cutoff. It can be used to make a sound thinner, to make it brighter, or to make the filter screaming for crazy squelchy sounds. Let's have a go at that. Okay, so here's our filter. Let's try it with the filter fully open. There you go, that's it brighter straight away. That will start to sound thinner. And then you can you can cause all kinds of chaos with the with the resonance fully turned up. You've got to be really careful when you do that though, because it can get very loud. Again, an example of that was the acid sound we created at the beginning of the course. Okay, let's move on. What we have here is simply an explanation of Zebra 2's filters. Again, it goes through cutoff, resonance, drive. Uh, modulations is something that's already been explained. So as I can show you here, if you remember. So the modulations are simply this bit here. Where you can target anything to anything. Okay, and then what we've got is, yeah, I've got voltage control filter. That's what it's called if you look on Zebra. VCF, voltage control filter is just a throwback from the old uh, analog modular synths. They were called voltage control filters, that's it. But here we have an explanation of all the different filter types. You can go through those and have a read. This brings us on to the XMF, the cross-modulation filter. Okay, we'll just have a look at some of this stuff. The two XMFs were introduced with Zebra version 2.1. It's a very powerful filter module that does a lot of analog type stuff, including input-dependent distortion and filter FM. Plus, it also self-oscillates without any input signal. The usage is very straightforward. It's got a typical cutoff and resonance controls along with five different filter types. You've got your four-pole low-pass and band-pass, two-pole band-pass, high-pass, and band-reject. It's also a stereo filter. It basically processes both stereo sides independently, which means that the two filters can be detuned from each other without using crazy amounts of CPU. Um, you can modulate the offset control that detunes left from right, give you a kind of panning effect. Um, you can also modulate the cutoff frequency by a sidechained audio signal. I'm not going to get into that too much because we're not dealing in sidechain, but I will show you it. So it can take any signal from any module that sits before it in the grid, 
But the best way to show you is what I've wrote there. Um, just root an oscillator into the XMF sidechain insert. The click parameter lets you add a little short impulse, which is good for really fast and hard attacks. And you've got a distortion type control that allows the you to adjust the amount of audio that goes into the filter itself. So again, have a read of this stuff and experiment, but I can show you some of this stuff in action. Okay, as you can see here, this is the XMF filter. As you can see, it's just the same as any other filter. Cutoff, resonance, key follow. A nice little overload feature here, which I showed you earlier, so you know what that does. Be careful, it can blow your head off, so just be really careful with it. Um, we've got an offset, an LFO1, which is, again, attached up here, but it's not really. It's a modulator got an, a filter FM section and another modulator and the click section. So let's have a listen and see what we could... Oh, we've also got this section here which gives us the two types of filters that we can have. And again, there's different features here that can mean you can put the, 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 the two filters into single, serial, parallel and other different types of filter type sounds. More details in the manual, have a read up on it. But again, it's just a normal filter with some nice differences. So let's have a listen, see what we can do. Let me just change that to that. Right, first thing we'll do, resonance. Basic, key follow, simple. Overload we know. Now let's mess around with the offset. As you can hear that, it's panning. Let's just change that to a panning bass. Which can then be modulated, and we'll just modulate it with LFO1. Very fast, but we'll change that to half notes. Modulating the panning, which is nice. And by using this here, you can make it uneven panning. Okay, and then we have the filter FM section. This allows us to modulate the filter cutoff by using any side chain signal. Now, as you can see there, when I added the filter, you see how that kind of goes like that? If we right click on that, you can see it's side chain one. So oscillator one is actually side chaining at the moment. I'm not going to get into that too much. Check the manual if you want to get into it a bit deeper. But it allows you to modulate the cutoff frequency. So have a listen. Let me just get rid of that. And then add LFO1 to that, perhaps. Okay, can you hear it? So that's basically the signal from the oscillator is now modulating the cutoff frequency, depending on the controls that you set up. And the click, hear it? It's adding that little click just at the beginning of the attack. Nice for kick drums and other kind of percussive sounds. Okay, let's move on. We have the comb filter, which I briefly showed you earlier on. The comb filters are basically very short delays that operate at the audio rate, i.e. a couple of samples or milliseconds. If you just feed a short noise into these devices um, and add some feedback, you'll get a tone much like an oscillator. 
The zebra's comb filter offers several modes. Up to four such short delays work together in various circuits and they're always in stereo. You can build all kinds of things, as it says there, envelope driven flanges, pluck strings, flutes, percussions, bowed strings, metallic sounds and so on. Just go crazy. Just have fun with the comb filters because they can give you some crazy results. Let me just show you the comb filter. This is the comb filter here. Now as you can see there's some very similar to the oscillator in fact. Tune, detune, vibrato, key scale. So we know what all these are so there's nothing new there. And again they work the same. Tune ranges from minus 48 to plus 48. Vibrato assigns the LFO1 and the key scale determines how the comb filter's pitch reacts to the notes played. So same as an oscillator pretty much. Feedback controls the delay feedback. A comb filter is a delay so this controls the amount of filtering. So let's have a listen to that. So here we have the comb filter. Can't hear anything. Can't hear anything we put the feedback on either. So what we'll do is we'll just turn up the input here which sends the signal from the oscillator if you listen. So we'll just put a little bit of signal in there. And then the feedback does what it says here. It controls the delay feedback. So basically controls the amount of filtering. Again, another one to be aware of. Okay, the next section is the damp parameter, which is basically a low pass filter, 6 dB per octave, or one pole, that works on the feedback path. We also have the tone parameters, which is different from mode to mode, We'll discuss that in a minute. And the distortion adds harmonic. Again, use the caution as I've said there. Okay, so let's have a listen to what these do then. As you can hear, low pass filter. And tone doesn't do anything in this mode. So you're not going to hear anything, but and distort obviously does what it does, but I'll let you hear it, but you need to be careful. Okay, it's because we didn't have any feedback up, it didn't work the first time. But you need to be careful, especially with these two parameters, because it can get a bit crazy. Especially if you've got headphones on. Watch your ears. Okay, some of the other stuff. Noise feeds white noise into the comb. Good for using when you're making pluck strings. Input controls the amount of signal from the channel, so whatever's in the channel, which is above the comb filter, that controls the amount of input that actually gets into the comb filter, which I've showed you already. The flavour parameter, uh, like the tone parameter, depends on the mode of the comb, so it only works in certain modes. But as you can see here, typically this controls the injection of the channel signal somewhere in between several comb stages and cascaded delays. Again, complex stuff. So I advise you to read the manual um, a bit more if you want to get more into that. I just want to show you these devices. So we know what input is. Flavor doesn't work in this mode. And then you've got a couple of obvious ones here. We know what width does. Pan. Volume. Obviously know what that does. Dry sends allows you to have a dry signal coming in from the oscillator. So we can take the input off and we've got nothing, but then we can bring in the dry signal. We'll just take the feedback off. So that's the unaffected signal. The comb is doing nothing to that signal and you can't do anything to that. So you can then mix it in with the comb signal. I'll just show you some cool stuff with the comb. If you want to hear that kind of normal comb filter type sound, you use the tuning. Sorry, with the feedback up. There's your comb filter. That's it. That's it for your comb filter. And I just showed you what the dry knob, the volume knob, and the pan control knob does. Okay, the modes. I'll show you the modes. 
Okay, here's the mode section here. Home. This is a simple stereo delay tuned to the played note. The tone and flavour parameters have no effect in this mode, which we just listened to. Split comb. In this mode, two delays feed into each other. The input is then summed together. The tone parameter controls the length ratios of the delays. The flavour parameter inserts X, the input signal, directly into the second delay. Outputs of each delay are left and right. I know that sounds complicated, and again, this is what I was getting at earlier on. These type of filters, you need to listen and figure out what's what's going on, because all of this jargon, it's great to have, because you know what's going on, but it doesn't make any sense to your musical brain, so you need to listen. Now, I can let you hear the split comb working. Okay, so I've changed it to split comb. I've got a little bit of tuning and a bit of feedback, some input. Now, if we use the tone, you'll hear it doing its thing. Make some nice, powerful sounds. And the flavour parameter as well. It inserts X, the input signal, directly into the second delay. So it makes a multiplication. And then inputs that directly into the second delay. Again, you can hear it happening, and that's the best way to figure out this stuff. You don't really want to get into the maths and what's actually going on well. Just listen to these filters, especially the comb filters and the XMF filters, and learn what they do by ear. After all, it's music you're making. The best way to learn is using your ears. Okay, then you've got several different combs. Just listen to them and figure out what they do. The information's here. I'm not going to go through them because it, it can get too convoluted. So just... Have a listen to them and see what's going on. That's the end of this section of the video course. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you've now got a firm grasp of what a filter is and how many different types of filters there are. And I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you in the next video course. Thank you.